Okay. Let's review what we did last time. And then, uh, and then we're going to start a new section today. We're still in preparing for the, uh, for the answer and like figuring out the satan, but we're starting the more Nebuchadnezzar today. Okay, that's why I just handed it out. So quick review. We had, oops, sorry. What did I just do? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Last, review of last class. What was the topic we talked about so long ago, last class? Angels, angels of God. Yes, you're right. So that we ended off with angels, but what was the main topic we talked about? Why they're portrayed physically? We did talk about that at the beginning. I'll give you a hint. Uh, F oh, and yeah. M. The matter and the. Oh, yeah. yeah, form and matter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. material. Yeah, and okay. The four yes, and the four causes, right? So everything. So this is just a review of last time. Uh, different words than last time, but. Chumer is the Hebrew word for material or matter. Sura is the is the word for form. Okay, and what what's so what, what's the difference between matter and form? Um, you they're both like you have them both together. All right. The matter is like the thing itself, I guess, like the material. The material, yeah, right. And form is the function, like what it's made into. Okay, good. All right, that's a good way to say it. Anyone else have a different? Uh, So matter is what it's made out of, form is uh, is what it's made into, okay? Um, so with matter, uh, there's an idea also of potentiality that if you have, for example, a lump of clay, you can make that into different things. Well, let's say, use the other example. When you have a bunch of planks, and you that's the material, and you can make it into a table, but once you make it into the table, it can't be made into something else unless you take it apart into its matter again. So matter is like, potential and form is actuality. And the more form a thing has, then the less potential it has. And the more and the less form something has, then the more potential it has. Okay. Form is the hard one, right? Form is the structure, design, arrangement, or ordering that which the thing is or that which gives it unity. And we read through that really difficult excerpt from Leon Cass. He says, form is what makes a being a unity and a whole in the world and through time. Form is that order or ordering that makes a one of the many components, giving it an integrity that the components by themselves do not have, right? So for example, with a phone, right? Um, we call this whole thing a phone, even though it's made out of different materials of glass and metal and plastic and all the other stuff. But the thing, the phoneness is what gives it its unity, right? And it's a specific arrangement and it's more than just the sum of its parts, okay? And then he also says that form, we begin to suspect that form is not primarily something visible or tangible. You can't draw it or touch it. In short, that there is, in the sense, some immaterial thing that unites and transforms the, absolute, the absolutely corporealized organism, uh, but what it is we cannot define. So it's hard to actually define the form. That's why we have to use weird words like shoeness or phoneness. Okay. And the very last thing we did in terms of form and matter is the complicated examples, is the form of a dog is its animality or its dogness. Um, a form of human being is what makes you human. Tell me, Kim, right? Uh, your your thought, your intellectual in, intellectuality, rationality, and then what's the form of the universe? What gives the universe its structure? Or, yeah, which are nature, nature or oh. malachim. Okay, exactly, right? So malachim is the form of the universe. All right. Now we get to this new part, and here's this is going to take us for uh, 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 the, the new phase, and what we're going to do. Ramam never wrote a commentary on Eov, but he wrote chapters in the Mor Nevuchim to present his uh, his understanding of Eov. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to read this together in English, and then I'll summarize in bullet points on the screen after each new idea. Okay, so like in terms of note taking, if you uh, if you're if you're taking notes, then you uh, wait for the bullet points because it'll be easier. Okay, and this is kind of this is high level philosophical stuff. Okay, so like the essence is going to be us discussing it. All okay? right. Would like to start to read. Emily? <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's more appropriate if Ayala reads because she's in Emily's seat. Uh, Fader, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Pause for one second, okay. So there's nothing wrong with form, but matter is a problem. Yeah, yeah, matter is where all uh, all defects come from, okay? Actually, I'm sorry, I, let me finish reading this, and I will put the summary on, then we'll discuss, okay, go ahead. Do you not see that all of the specific forms are perpetual and permanent? Corruption occurs to the form only by accident. 
I mean, because of it being joined to map. Okay. Dead stuff here, guys. Here, here's the summary, and then we'll, we'll have to talk about this and go through examples. So physical things are only subject to deterioration. He uses the word corruption, but I, I don't like the word corruption for English. Deterioration on account of their matter, not their form. Now, does that make sense, or do you have a problem with I have it? A problem. Okay, go ahead. Say the problem. Okay, let's say you take. Can I bring an example? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we're going to have to use a lot of examples for all this stuff because yeah. only it's hard to think about in abstract. Yeah. Um. So if you take like DNA, for example. Yeah. So I think that's actually uh, that. It, actually, you know, I I don't know enough about DNA to say. But go ahead, say what you're going to say anyway. Like everything. Okay, if you bring it down to the last thing, it's made out of like atoms or like neutrons or electrons but those in and of itself there's nothing wrong with those it's when like they're put together in a specific arrangement and that's the form right that makes right that's the oh, okay i see what you're saying okay good good so can we do do me a favor let's start with a simpler example and then we'll take the dna as, as uh as yeah, an example saying like the physicality of it is what gives it its problems and the yeah physicality of it is the matter exactly it's not right it's exactly right so who could be a uh more everyday example of like where something is subject to deterioration or decay uh, and it's the matter that is decaying and not the form. It's like rotting table. It's not, I don't like the table Yeah, exactly, right? So a rotting table, it, it's it, the tableness is totally fine. It's the material that the table is made out of that is rotting. Or if you want to use a an example, since we don't have um, tableness is, uh, is, is, is still like an artificial concept, take a, a, a building, okay? So the form is the the blueprint, right? Or the uh, the blueprint represents the form, but the form is like in the blueprint. So you make a building out of matter, but all buildings decay and and uh, and start to fall apart. But what's changing? What it's, made of. what it's made of is changing. The design of the building is still as perfect as it was. But what's happening is you have the design and the matter. And the when you first make the building, the design and the matter are very, very like locked in, firm, like attached. But then what happens is the matter starts to creep away from the design and fall apart. And the design still exists in concept, but the matter is no longer embodying that design. I still have a problem with that because if like matter is conserved, then like the matter itself isn't like going away. No. So what do we say? And we said this last time with the Lion King example. What's happening to the matter? It's taking on another form. Right. So yeah. the matter itself is not like being bad, but the form is. Right. So, what, what, so what, well, here's the thing. Technically, what's happening is like this, is the matter is, and we're going to personify the matter because it makes it easier to talk about, the matter is trying to escape its form and become and, and, and attach itself to another form. Okay. And it's that process that is that that is causing what we say is deterioration or defects. Here's another example. A melting snowman. Okay, so you have uh, snow, which is in the form of a man, <laughs> okay, or an, uh, a creature. It doesn't really look like a man, but okay, whatever, a snowman, right? And when it melts, so it is, it, the, the, the water, uh, the, the um, snow is trying to become something else, which, what is it trying to become, trying to become? Yeah, a, pu a puddle of water, yeah. exactly, right? So it's, it, it's like the, the, the snowman form and the water are parting and like going apart, you know? And that's what is that's what is causing the deterioration, okay? Um, I, I want to revisit DNA at the very end of the chapter because I think it'll be clear here, okay? Um, so, and or here here's another example as well. If you think of any uh, imperfection, like if you if you draw a uh, a square and it's not perfectly square or a circle, okay? So the the mathematical concept of the square and circle is totally perfect, and that always exists, but the material instance of it is not in line with the form like like there's the perfect mathematical circle but then when you draw it with ink that ink circle doesn't line up with the 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 mathematical form and that's why we call it a bad circle or imperfect circle so for some people the mathematical examples help for some people the the no, tangible yeah, examples the help. Example. yeah yeah i just feel like you shouldn't compare the form that you make on the paper to the form of like but that's what you are trying to do when you try to draw a circle. You're trying to approximate. You're trying to like get as close as possible to the 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 pure the pure you know abstract concept of the circle. Even even if it you were comparing it to that, I still see it as the form of the circle that you drew isn't, isn't perfect. 
See, but th th that's you're technically not drawing the form of the circle. You're drawing a material circle, and and trying to get as close to the form as possible. The form though is not physical. The form is something that exists in the mind. Right. So it's like made of your is where the problems are. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the badness, what is the what do we mean by the badness of the circle? Is the lack of conformity, conformity, right? Between the material on the paper and the abstract idea, the form. It's not conforming. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, next. Uh oh sorry, hold on just a second. Do we finish the point here? Uh da 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 da. Oh, yeah, oh well, one, one more example. This is slightly more con uh, complicated uh, than, but not quite as complicated as DNA. Um, well, <laughs> it's complicated to think about in terms of this of this example. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, well, actually, you know what? fine. I mean, I'll use DNA as an example. Okay. So take things that are considered genetic defects, right? Mutations, right? But not all mutations are we call defects, right? So take for give me an example of a, a genetic defect that results in a in or sorry, um, give me the example of yeah, something that someone could be born with that's like a gen like Down syndrome, okay, right? So what what causes Down syndrome? Okay, good. So what is happening there, right? Is that the there is the form of the human uh, organism. Right, and here we're not talking about telomelochem. Okay, let's just talk about like the body. Like, there's the the picture, like the ideal the the ideal human body, which would uh, which you would need a certain specific sequence uh, and and uh, arrangement of DNA in order to produce. But you have an extra material thing, which which does not totally conform with the code, so to speak, of the perfect. Organism. It's like actually it's easier to think about it as computer code, right? Is if you add a letter or something like that and it messes up the the program, or if you take away a letter, it can mess up the whole program. So you have, but in, in in this is where it gets confusing is that in human in DNA you have a code, but you also have the material of the actual like thing itself that that uh, I forgot what an allele is. I know that's a DNA word, but what is an allele? Like a section. Yeah. Like okay, it is a material thing though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it, it's the fact that you've, it, it's equivalent to typing. You're trying to, again, I, it, maybe computer, I also don't understand computer programming. So it's like, I'm using whatever I can do. So like, let, let's say there's a, a certain, oh, password. I understand passwords. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's say there's a certain complex password that if you, if you type it in, then it will get you into the program. But if you add something or you subtract something, so then the letters you typed are not conforming to, to that uh, that sequence that's supposed to be, and therefore you won't get the right result. So same thing with DNA is if you have an extra or a lacking of of something material that does not quite conform to the uh, the code of the ordinary organism, it'll deviate, and we'll call that a um, uh, a defect or a mutation. And I guess even when I said even uh, positive mutations, it's still a mutation. It still is like. You know, like let's say you have some weird mutation that gives you like super hearing or something like that. You know, or you know, it still is deviating from the norm of what the organism is uh, is, is designed as. You know, right. yeah. Um, but sure. First of all, there, I don't think there's ever such thing as like a perfect form of something because everything is unique. And second of all, um, yeah. So can you just define <laughs> redefine what material is in the password? Like, what is the material? So in the password, the, and this is the hard part. In the, in the password, the material is the um, the letter, the letters that you enter. Well, there's nothing wrong with those letters. No, but what is wrong? There's nothing wrong, and just like there's nothing wrong with material. But what's wrong with what makes it a bad password entry is it the the material letters that you have are not conforming to the the pattern that that unlocks the program. So the arrangement of the letters is not. The arrangement of letters, the correct arrangement of letters is the form, but the actual arrangement of the letters is the material. In other words, the thing you're trying to enter, the thing you're trying to to, to match up to is the form. It, it, here's another example. This is a bad example. It's kind of like a password though, but it's more concrete. You know, the, I don't know if babies actually have these toys, but they, like the, the pegs with like, like the square hole and like the circle hole and the star hole, yeah. you know, so like, Picture the um, the board or whatever it is with the holes in it, 
as the form and the material is the particular pegs. So you're trying to align the particular material with the, the sequence that it's supposed to fit into. The incorrect alignment is the, is the matter. Well, so here's the thing. This is why I, I, I think it's something in the middle of what you're saying, which is that there's nothing wrong with those pegs, right? right. And there's also nothing wrong with the, the, um, the, the box. I, don't, I keep calling it box. I don't know what you call it, the board, right? Yeah, yeah. But what makes it a bad doing of the puzzle is when they don't conform to each other. Is when there's a when 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 the material is not fitting into the actual thing. So so too, and I'm going to answer your first question now also. So too, if you look at what a human being is supposed to be in terms of just the thing that makes the organism function at peak capacity, of which there's nothing, there's no there's no such thing. You're right. There's no such thing as a perfect human being because all human beings differ. But what but there is a a like the way the organism is supposed, is supposed to function. For example, like, like you have a certain number of chambers in your heart. You have a certain number of like, you have certain parts in your brain, you know, like, you know, they are supposed to do certain things. So if you imagine there is a, uh, a, a, a blueprint of the human body, and when things deviate from that blueprint, we call that a defect because it's not conforming to the actual pattern. And all of us have imperfections, Right, but some of them actually compromise the full functioning of the organism. Some of them don't. Certain things don't have a, an exact form. Don't have a set form. See, but that's what I'm trying to say: is the form is exact and it's uniform, but the particular instances differ. In other words, there is there is I, in, in in not that God has a a separate mind, but in God's mind, so to speak, there is a blueprint of what a human organism is. Right. But all of the particular actual humans our matter it doesn't conform exactly to that. So let's say like you're like 98%, I'm like 97%, you know, like- It's not comprehensible. And to what extent do you have to fit? No one fits the form, so what is the point you would need? The form is is what would be the a perfectly functioning organism. Why does that matter? No, I'm not, I'm, we don't care why it matters, but that's what- that's Why what, is that like relevant? I just don't because this is what all problems come from. But no one's gonna fit the form, so there's always problems. Yes, because we're material beings. What does that mean? Well, if 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 it if it impairs your function, the function of the organism, for example, let's say as a result of a certain genetic defect, your lifespan is cut short, or let's say like your your heart can't function properly to get blood to the to all the places where it needs to go, or like you know something like that. So then it it matters a lot to that person, you know. Sometimes you can have. Right, and that's what I was saying before. Also, is that some of them, just like in a in a machine, sometimes if you mess up one thing, it compromises the function of the entire machine. Sometimes it compromises the function of part of the machine, and sometimes it doesn't matter at all. You know. I, think I need to see what you're saying specifically to get it, because this is too. Out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to particularize. Let me give you another example, okay? Let me give you another example. How can a doctor ever say that you're sick? What does he mean when he says you're sick? Or let's say when he says there's something wrong here, what does the doctor mean when he says something is wrong? If everyone, if no one's perfect, then there can be nothing that's wrong. So what does he mean when he says something's wrong? See, I wouldn't say usual unless you mean something specific by usual, because usual just means like if we add up all the average results, then what's usual? And guess what? In America, most people are obese, so that's usual. So if you're obese, you're not unhealthy. You know. Homeostasis. That's a good term. Yeah. See, I don't want to use the word usual for this reason that I just said. Yeah. So what is the what what determines whether you something is wrong with your body medically or not? Is that there is an ideal functioning of the human body, which you can call homeostasis, right? I think that, that is the term that's still used medically, right? Uh what was the definition of homeostasis you were taught in uh in school, roughly? Your body regulates itself. Yeah, let me just look up the definition. We have an internet. Why can I not? I that was literally on it. That question yeah. was literally on it. I remember. <laughs> it was like 98.3, 98.2, 98.1. <laughs> I, I apparently watched the whole See, <laughs> Google Chrome is not. Yeah, I know. We're pushing. Uh, um, <laughs> so it says. Uh, yeah, it's like equilibrium, right? The tendency towards a relatively stable equilibrium between independent elements, especially as maintained by physiological processes. 
Okay, so if you've learned that, then it'll make sense. If not, then that makes it more complicated, which is why I didn't want to like start off with that. But when a doctor says that you are, hold on. Something's, something's fishy here. Something is not right. Oh, okay. Um, no, it still is sharing. Oh, was I, was I, did I never go out of sharing? See what's going on? Oh, there, okay. There and there. Okay. Um, yeah. So when, when a doctor says that, that there's something wrong with you, right? It's not wrong in that it is a deviation from the norm. It's wrong in that it's a deviation from what your body is supposed to be doing. From the optimal functioning, the optimal. And what does optimal mean? It means that the body was like any machine. The body was designed to work in a certain way where all of its processes are working and it is in homeostasis and it, it lives for the maximum amount of time and it the brain thinks in the maximum way and the you know the, everything you know the stomach digests in the maximum way so to say that you're sick or that you're suffering from some sort of uh, of, of defect means that something in your material body is not in line with that plan of the body the way it's supposed to function so what about those in between thought, thought cases like let's say a freckle like you can see that as an but it's not good or bad. Right. So, so that's what I'm saying is that there are there are deviations that result in something that is that compromises the actual functioning of the organism, and then there are ones that uh, that just lead to a particular harm, and then the ones that don't affect the functioning of the organism at all. So freckles would not would not so be that's, that. That's not what. That's something completely different than what you No, it's it's the same. It's just it's not one that that compromises the functioning of the organism. You know. Yeah, this is different. Yeah, it, it's it's quantitatively different. Okay, is that that thing is not gonna? But here's the thing. Here, here's another example, right? Is that um, and a lot of these could be dependent on the circumstances. But let's say like white skin. Okay, we would say that's not gonna compromise the functioning of the organism. But I'll tell you what is, if you're in a really sunny environment and you have and you have to be outside all the time, it's you're gonna burn easier. You know, so like environment was it? <laughs> yeah. yeah no. <laughs> so environmentally, it, it could be a problem. But I think think of the example. I think maybe the doctor example is the easiest example. Is that like if it is, or if you want to not think about a human being, think of IKEA furniture. Okay, is IKEA anyone ever or any furniture that you assemble, right? So like, let's say let's say you have the assembly. Like I, I bought a, a new office chair uh, at the beginning of this uh, this year uh, for my apartment, and like. Let's like say, everyone did, man. like everyone did, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I accepted the fact that I'm going to be sitting a lot, you know. So, like, let's say, so you, there's a certain blueprint for how it's supposed to be assembled. But let's say, like, one of the plastic pegs, like, got messed up in the machine, so it doesn't fit properly, you know. So it's not a lack in the design, and it's not even a lack in the peg. That peg is totally fine; it could go on and live a happy life. But when you try to make the peg fit into the chair to be in line with its um, design, so then it, it it can't function properly. It's not, no, but see, that's the thing is, 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 is it's the material, the material is not in line with, with the way, with the form that it's supposed then to be. It's two things, it's the form and the material. Yes. It's not independent of the but, but the form itself, again, the form equals the design, right? The design, what the design actually right. is, and the material is the stuff that is embodying the design. So in the way that this chair was designed, you need four perfectly round pegs, for example, right? That's the design. But that particular peg, its material has a little extra stump on it, or its material has a little extra divot in it. Uh, where did the stump come from? Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. All that matters, like it could have come from someone dropped it. It could have come from like the uh, the machine, like hiccuped and like had a little bit of extra plastic there. You know, all that matters is that now I can't say that without thinking. About it, is that this particular peg will not be able to conform to its uh, to its right design? And there is a right design in the chair because without a perfectly square uh, circle thing, then it doesn't uh, it doesn't function. Yes, that's a good, another good example, right? Is using another wrong key for the lock is there is a right key, which is determined by what? How do you know what determines the right key? This is a good. This is a good. The lock itself, right? The lock itself is, is what determines whether you have the right key. So if the thing that you're trying to cram into the thing doesn't actually fit perfectly, 
So then it is a lack in the material key. It's not a lack in the lock. It's not the lock's fault, so to speak, you know? Is that this key, this material key does not conform to the form of the of the lock. Okay. That's good. That's a good analogy. Okay, that's that's, that's like a super analogy of my baby peg game. <laughs> Only one that queen I can actually like understand. Yeah. Okay. Let's read on. Let's read on, and then maybe it'll become clear. Okay. Uh, it's going to become more more complicated, but maybe seeing it from okay, different it'll make angles. Like, it'll make more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is this is like very very uh, difficult stuff here. Um, so it might take us a while. Okay. So uh, all right, this is hard now. Okay, here we go. Who wants to read this one? Uh, the nature and true reality. Uh, yeah. Or the see it. Okay, who wants to read? You want to read there? Okay. Okay. Now, do you know what privation means? Okay. No. Uh, so it's related to deprivation. So to, to so the difference between deprivation and privation is like this. De what does it mean to deprive someone of something? Lack. To well, to deprive to is to make them lack. Right. Privation is just the lack of something, oh. the lack of something that ought to be there. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty cool sound. My dad is like it either, I know. Sorry. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, okay, so uh, start, start from the beginning again now that we know what privation means. Okay. The major and true reality of matter is such that it never ceases to be feeling, feeling, and hate. Hence, no form remains constantly in it, for it perpetually casts off one form and takes on another. How extraordinary is what Colombo said in his wisdom when likening matter to a promiscuous life. For matter is in no way found without form and is consequently like a promiscuous wife who is never separated from man and is never free from man. However, since she is a promiscuous wife, she never ceases to seek for another man to substitute for her husband, and she deceives and draws him on in every way until he obtains from her what her husband used to obtain. This is the state of matter. For whatever form is found in it does not prepare it to receive another does not uh, does but prepare it. Oh. Or whatever form is found in it does but prepare it to receive another form that is actually in it and to obtain and to obtaining another form. I'll explain in a second. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really yeah. difficult stuff, yeah. Okay. And the self-same state obtains after that other form has been obtained in actuality. It has then become clear that all passing away and corruption or deficiency are due solely to matter. All right, so let me put my summary up here so we could just have the summary. Uh, matter by nature is constantly casting off one form and taking on another. Okay. This is really like, is that again? That uh, I'm gonna add a little details, but this is the main point though. We gotta keep our eye on the ball. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, so uh, this is the circle of life analogy, right? Is the um, the matter that is the, the gazelle becomes the lion when it eats it. And then the, when the lion dies, its matter becomes the soil and then its matter becomes the grass and then the grass is eaten by the gazelles and then so on, right? So. What's the analogy of the promiscuous wife? Okay, so first of all, just to let you know, I forgot if I mentioned this when we did Mishlei. So we all know the Aisha's Chayel, but there's also the evil wife, and that's she. She also shows up, and so Aisha's Chayel is the good one, and then the, the she's called different things: the Isha Nachria, the strange woman, or like the um, <laughs> yeah, the the the, uh, the 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 plotting woman. So in the Mushal matter is compared to a promiscuous wife and you need both those qualities so promiscuous means what in english <laughs> yeah it is like that but it's a little bit more it's in a certain way promiscuous means that she sleeps around right yeah okay yeah. not provocative no uh, uh is that what you said provocative I mean, she might be, she might be provocative, but as what makes you promiscuous is that you, is that she's sleeping around and then, but she's married to one guy. So here's the thing. She's attached to her husband in marriage, but she's looking for another man all the time. Okay. So how is matter like a promiscuous mm -hmm. wife and form like the husband? Constantly in flux. In, it's constantly in flux. Exactly. Okay. Right. So always at some point. It, it, but it is always with a man. It's always with form. Okay, right? So take an apple and picture a rotting apple. 
So, and again, we got to personify it because it's easier to talk about that way. Okay. So there's the matter that makes up the apple. And then there's the form of apple, the appleness. Okay. Now, as the apple rots, what's going on with its matter? Changing it's changing to it's changing to something else. It's changing to like soil, let's say, right? It's decomposing, right? So it's attached. So that matter is attached to the form of apple, but it's trying to get away and become soil. And then when it's soil, it's trying to get away and become something else. So it's always, like you said, it's always in flux. But, but what that means is the matter is always, it's never, matter and form are never permanently married and, 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 and unchanging. The matter is always trying to get away from the form to become something else. And then when it becomes that thing, it tries to get away and become something else and so on and so on and so on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Does is, is this make sense? Okay, good. And some things take a long time for that process to happen, like, uh, like you know, stone, right, doesn't deteriorate very, uh, or diamonds, you know, don't deteriorate very much at all. But everything deteriorates. Okay, it's just a question of the of the rate. Okay, and by deteriorating, it means it breaks away from its form and becomes something else. Okay, um, and you could do it by nature, and you could do it by force. Okay, because when you eat an apple, you are violently ripping the matter away from the form of apple and try and make it into the matter of you. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So now he goes back to talking about how imperfections stem from matter. And maybe this will clarify the point from before. Uh, who wants to read this next one? Okay, go ahead. Thus, in the case of man, for instance, it is clear that the deformity of his physical body, the fact that his limbs do not conform to their nature, and also the weakness, frustration, or the troubling of his function, no matter whether all this be in inherent in his natural constitution from its beginning or be only a subserving accident. That all is this consequence upon his corrupt matter and not upon his form. Similarly, every living being dies and becomes ill solely because of its matter and not because of its form. Okay, pause there for one second. Here's the summary. In the case of man, all physical defects stem from matter. So this is really what we were talking about earlier, but now he's addressing it square on, is that, that if your matter perfectly conformed to the plan for the human body, then you would be in a state of homeostasis forever. But when you, when something happens, like let's say for example, you get, um, uh, you a get a virus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I was trying to think how to put it delicately, but I can't. Yeah. Right. So, um, so let's, I mean, I'm just trying to think of an example though that I understand clearly because I don't really understand how the coronavirus works. Um, let's say for instance, Oh, let's take an allergy, right? So uh, I, I, I don't know if this is all allergies or certain types of allergies, but let's say like what happens, what happens to people who have a peanut allergy? Like what's going on? Yeah, yeah, their immune system is treating something which is not actually a threat. It's treating it like a threat, right? So there, what's going on? Is this a good example? I feel like I do in order to make it understand, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's a difficult example also. Um, if you talk about someone with a broken leg. Yeah, broken leg. That's a good example. Okay, right? Good. So legs are supposed to support your weight, right? And enable you to walk. But if you've got a broken leg, so the material of your leg is not in line with the form of what a leg is supposed to be to facilitate full functioning of the organism. So I thought the material is always broken. Is always what? I thought the material is always no, I, I, I can't well, yes, yeah, so there's, no, there's nothing wrong with a broken leg outside of the body, <laughs> right? Like, but but a broken leg in the body is bad. That makes for a bad body. Wait, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not, okay. I'm not like the matter. Matter is not synonymous with material. We're, we're, we've been using it that way today. Like, we've been using it interchangeably. Yeah, because when we read that excerpt from Leon Cass, he wanted to only use matter for, like, the basic building blocks of the entire universe. But there's nothing wrong with the bone. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the bone itself, but as a part of the body, it is not in line with what it's supposed to, with what its function, because it's supposed to be supporting weight and facilitating motion, and it can't when it's broken. Uh, you know that yeah, so someone argue against that. I mean, there are many forms, and it turns, not, not one matter has different forms, like it just, based on what it is, you define it by different forms, I think. Okay, that, that's true, but let me just let me just strengthen Ellie's question here. Is maybe that one guy with a broken leg, he's healthy, 
And all of us with fully functional legs, we're the ones who are. I mean, I mean. No, but I think I think that is what you mean. No. <laughs> How do you know it's not built into the form for it to break? Oh, to break? Okay, I see what you're saying. To break? I think it's the same question. I think it's the same question. Is that um, that when you say built into the form? A lot of people's legs break. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like let's say a candy or something, which in order to eat it, you break it. So yeah. That's the form of it. The form of it is to break. Yeah, like a Kit Kat, right? Like Kit Kats, you break apart, right? Oh. In order to live a long time, naturally your leg will break because that's where it's coming. So okay, I, um, okay, I, I, I hear what you're right. saying. So maybe, maybe it's more of it to protect you from breaking the rest of your body. So your leg. Like, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, rigid system. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, okay. So the, the yeah, yeah. Okay, so the 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 ability for bones to break. That's a, good, that's a good question here. Can we switch it to form for a second? Yeah. Can we pretend that the wrong bone said that form is what's bad and material is good. Even though that's the opposite of what he said. <laughs> because for some reason, it's just not, no matter how many times we use it, I just don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, we got th this way. We got to find the right example here. Like yeah. No, even the right example. Like, Can we just blend the deep again? Right? And if we don't get it, we'll go backwards. Uh, we'll this is again. the deep idea. <laughs> I mean, this is the premise in order to be able to get the idea. Okay. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with your bones. There's nothing wrong with like, just the physical makeup of your bones. The problem is, is when it breaks that form, when the material changes because of the influx, that's when you, problems arise. That's the problem. The reason why this is going to confuse you even more is because you're trying to treat the matter, the material as form. Yeah. <laughs> you you yourself <laughs> said that <laughs> that form when the material goes against form. I think it's actually, no. There's nothing wrong with the material. The material, material yeah, I know it's confusing. But it moves. The moving is changing form. Forget that. No, I get what you're saying. When it takes on a new form. Like, but it's not bad, do it's just a new form. Okay. Yeah. Right. See, that, and that's why I was trying to say uh, the bone in isolation, okay? Like, if I just, if I had a human femur right on the table here, and I went, whoosh, and I broke it, there's nothing bad about that, right? But who says bad time broken leg? No. No, no so that, no, that, that is what I'm saying, though, that, that when your leg is broken, then the functioning, uh, the thing that the leg is supposed to do in the organism which I'm just saying for for uh, for our purposes is to hold up your weight and enable you to stand and walk. Then you can't do that. And if you ask me, well, how do we know that that is part of the uh, the the function of the organism? Well, certainly. See, we, I, here I would say I, that the you, you were measuring it by what's usual, right? Earlier, and like you know, I, I, I and I said that there's some merit to what you're saying. Is that definitely like like human beings were designed to walk? You know, in the sense of of that's what makes us, you know, um, different than like the other uh, many other types of primates is that we can walk upright. You know, um, and so like, and there's practical reasons also for survival, right? What happens to an, an animal that can't move? They die. Yeah, they die. They can't get their food, or they get eaten, or whatever. You know, so like th I'm saying, if you look at how the organism is supposed to function in terms of the organism in its entirety and then in, in its surroundings, then being the, the broken leg is the one that is a defect and the intact leg is the one that's not a defect. Now, you were asking a separate question, which is a good question, which is maybe bones are designed to be breakable because that's of some, because that's, uh, that, that's, that's part of its form as well, right? And that I'd say is a good point, but I'm saying that the particular human being with a broken leg is in a defective state because it can't function fully in terms of the way it's supposed to function. Human beings, do we have to look at them like their original form? Exactly right? So, he, like, the, this you, is the, you take evolution, yeah, and you take technology and innovation, you don't need like so. Th this is the thing. difficulty with, with learning the Ramam on EO, which is that they thought obviously they didn't know about evolution, but they also thought that all forms in the universe were permanent and unchanging. Okay, um, and in truth. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll show you that, that, that is, this is only a problem with animals, okay, uh, and organisms, because in we still hold in physics and in Torah that the laws of physics don't change. Physics doesn't hold that the laws of physics change, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing that changes is 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 matter. And what change? What, what the complication that this introduces about organisms is that there is no set form. There is a set. Gravity is part of the form of the universe. It is a law. Okay. Electromagnetism is a law, but the the structure, the design of the human body is not a fixed law. It really is just the outcome of the evolutionary processes. And that's constantly changing. And if you, if you fast forward 10 million years, 100 million years, man's or, uh, you know, the human being's body might be different, you know? So it's not truly analogous to a table which has a fixed form. It's something that is constantly changing. And that's what makes it a little bit more difficult as well. That's why I'm, I'm like hesitant to talk about DNA because that's something that was not taken into account back then. When you break the femur, well, yeah. The uh, fever didn't do anything. It was the breaking that changed the form. It's not changing the form layout. That's the thing I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. The form, okay. the form is no. We gotta, we gotta, I, I we gotta, gotta unlearn whatever. I'm we gotta, yeah, we gotta, we gotta fight this out. Okay, is that <laughs> that what is what has changed is again think of the blueprint and the and the building, right? If I bust down a door, have I changed the blueprint? No, I've changed the material door. And now that material door no longer conforms to the, the design and the blueprint. But then the uh, actual house yeah. the thing is a form in itself. It's not the blueprint, that's its form. Its form is yeah. its form. It's an abstract form. And you can make anything into that. Into yeah, form. I can make that entire house out of jello if I wanted. It probably wouldn't last very long, though, or out of spaghetti, right? But, but it is a certain design. And then there's the material in the, the material stuff that I'm I'm aligning with that design. So what form makes is the design a design? Let's say this tissue box, like I can make a round tissue box, there's still tissues in it. Right. So when it comes to, to man-made objects, then who makes the design? Yeah. yeah, the inventor, right? Whoever like like invents the particular thing. So there's a certain subjectivity to it, you know. So that's for man-made things. Okay. Now talk about in in nature, and let's talk about not organisms, let's talk about inorganic matter. Who is the one who says that water is H2O? Oh, one. No, God, God right? In other words, you have uh, the, the two hydrogen and oxygen, right? That's gonna be water. I don't care what you call it, but it is You're something. The idea of that, those yeah, those, the, yeah who, who's the one? Combining? Yeah, that it will make water, no matter what you call it. Like you could call it whatever you want, but it will make make water, right? Now, who who determined that is God. God set the form of water, right? Um, and if you took away one of the hydrogens, it would not be water anymore. If you took away the oxygen, it wouldn't be water anymore, right? So that form, that form is not abstract. It, it is, and then this this, this is a crazy every thing. Every form is abstract. Then. Every form is abstract. Yeah, yeah. But but the difference between the tissue box and and water is that the, the form of water exists in objective reality. Meaning, according to the laws of physics, if you put two hydrogen and an oxygen together, you it, it will be water no matter what 100%. And that's not made up. That's God created that form. But with a clean tissue box, it was someone who invented tissue box. It was like, oh, I have a good idea for a design. Boom. And now that becomes the model for all tissue boxes. But then you could be like in a, a futuristic society where all tissue boxes are round. You know, that's sort of like you make it up as you go, you know? Okay. And then and then and then human animals and organisms are a little bit more difficult because of evolution. There is an objective design, but it's constantly changing due to the laws of evolution. And that's why like we can't speak of it in absolute terms like we do with water. Is an objective form and reality that yes. God made. Yeah. And if matter changes, that's on you. That's not. It's not, it's not it's on you, but it's that's it's what causes the defect. The form exactly, it's not a defect in the form itself. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Right, is that that this whole thing is premised on the fact that there are objective forms that God made in the universe, and that when we ever we speak of defects, it means deviation from the of the matter from that design, from that plan, from that form. And with that into let, let's keep out. <laughs> we'll start with nature. This gets into Hushgaka later. Okay. Um, all right. Let's stop for today. Let it sink in. Think about. Yeah. We'll come back to it next week. We need it. Okay. All right. So we'll take a break now, and then uh, when we come back.